when we think of speakers, we always think of these people who are like, uh, if I, Ver, uh, Sir Richard Branson, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez, definite, yeah. uh, definite extroverts, right? Mm -hmm. But we all don't have to be like that, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have, and again, you don't have to be like that. Um, to me, when you understand why you have to do it, sometimes public speaking, mm -hmm. why you have to do it is mm -hmm. uh, get over yourself. What is the reason I need to get this message across? Mm -hmm. Right when I go on air, um, it's not about how good I sound. Okay, mm. I have to sound good, but that's not my overall objective. My right. overall objective, whenever I go to work, whenever I interview someone, is will someone listen to this interview, podcast, uh, on radio, and said, "Wow, I learned." One person said, "I learned something from that interview," mm. and if one person heard that and said it made a difference to their lives, I've done my job. Hello everyone, welcome to The Achiever Show, where our goal at the show is to bring to you some of the top achievers so that you can learn from their mindset and strategies for you to be successful in your life as well. Now, in today's episode, we have a really special guest. She lived and breathed business for the past decade. She's the lead producer at Malaysia's only business station, BFM. And over the past few years, she has conducted over 5,000 interviews with prominent names such as author Stephen Covey, motivational speaker, Nick Voich and former CEO of GE Jack Welch. She's also an author of five books. In her career, she wears several hats as a keynote speaker, most sought after moderator and MC. Now today, she's the best person that I know that can share with you this topic, how to get people to listen to you every time you speak. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Miss Freda Liu. Hello Freda, welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah, so I remember one year ago, you and I was like in this position, but that time you were actually the moderator for my book launch, so we exchanged position. Right, okay, <laughs> now I'm in the hot seat. Yeah. Well done again, you know, for, for being so young and having, uh, you know, released that book. I, I enjoyed reading it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I'd just like to start off with uh, this question. Maybe you can share a little bit about how did you end up in BFM and what was that journey like to you? Oh wow, how much time have you got? Definitely when it all started, you weren't born yet, for sure. Wow. Okay, okay. Um, how I ended up in BFM, I've worked as a uh, part-time TV, radio, a news reader, mm -hmm. right? Um, and while this was a part-time job, and my full-time job was, I was actually working for a public relations company okay. for a couple of years and then okay. I joined uh, IBM mm -hmm. in, uh, doing PR as well from yeah. Malaysia to regional okay. and then this station called BFM called me up, uh, not started yet at that point and I had a chance to speak to Malik Ali, the, the owner and what I liked about it was that it was talk radio, uh, wasn't just a music station, it was talk radio and it was business. Mm -hmm. So I was very yeah. interested in that whole idea that it was a common and it was a combination of business and you know we do play great music, um, and it was something that married my corporate experience and and, and broadcasting experience, right? Uh, but it was a uh, a big decision I had to make because I've never worked for a startup. I've always worked for an MNC, mm -hmm. supposedly very secure. Uh, but one of the deciding factors why I took the job was because it was also very close to my house. Mm. Actually, when I was working at IBM, it was one traffic light to 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 work mm -hmm. and then working to BFM was two traffic lights to work. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the reasons I joined BFM and uh, so you know it's mm. been over 10, over 10 years now. Wow. So uh, as I go through your profile, I realized that a lot of career that you are in is actually requires you to speak a lot. Mm. So <laughs> were you an extroverted person back then? Uh, I realized that yes, I am. Okay. And um, I guess when people talk to me as well, mm. sometimes Life will give you clues, especially when you're young, right? I mm -hmm. always like debates. Uh, I like taking part in drama. I like doing all these things, but you never think of that as a career. You think yeah. of the sensible thing. Nobody, nobody taught me to be, you know, uh, sensible in that sense. But it's just like, okay, um, do a, do go into public relations. That's a reliable job. That's a reliable career. But then when I look back, these were things that I was naturally interested in. You no know, storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Um, and so 
it was it was I get it's also a personality, right? Yep. I mean that's that's my personality as well. Mm. Yep. Okay, okay. So uh, in today's topic, we're going to talk about how do you get people to listen to you every <laughs> time you speak. So uh, let's start off. Uh, what does communication actually means to you, and why is it important? Okay. Uh, how do I get people to listen to me? Uh, ask my son that he doesn't listen to me, <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't work all the time. Uh, maybe because when you're in the radio and mm. you're in the car and you happen to be switch on that station, you got no choice. You're stuck right. in the car. You have to listen to me. Um, but on a on a serious note, I mm. I believe that um, you got to be very clear with your messaging. Uh, for example, when I'm doing interviews, right? Mm. I I try to get the information out of that individual, out of the interviewee, and what would benefit the listener, right? I, it's not, it's, I, and also I guess if I'm curious about something, I assume that the person next to me would be mm. just as curious about right. the business or that person, right? So it's about what the, the message is, trying to get that story across to me. I think that's really important. Um, mm. And it's so, so that would be basic. So, mm -hmm. and then you realize that you don't apply any of these principles when talking to your son. <laughs> <laughs> you just mm -hmm. nag at him and hope he'll listen. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think that's the ultimate thing to, to get the story out of someone, right? Okay. Yeah. And how do you uh, make sure that you actually get the story out from someone? Is it by asking questions or how do you do that? Oh, definitely asking questions. Mm -hmm. In radio, you can't be the one talking. Right. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's the interviewee. It's not me, right? It's mm -hmm. the interviewee. I find that for me, me, um, my style of interviewing is I like mm. them to come early. Right. The reason mm. I like them to come early is then I get to know them as a person, right? Mm. We, we try to have a conversation. Uh, my, uh, this is something that I learned in NLP, you know, trying to do, create a rapport. So by the time we get on air, mm. the person feel like they're talking to a friend. Mm. Right? When you're talking to a friend, you're more relaxed and you don't feel like there's this huge mic in your face. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a personal style, right? Mm. Uh, I try to get a person to laugh one time first. Okay. Right? The moment you laugh also, you're a little bit more relaxed, right? So that's my style. So that is before the interview? That's before the interview, okay. right? That, mm. That's my style because I want to bring out the best in the person, right? right? Um, and, and so that they're comfortable. When you're comfortable, then you'll talk, right? Mm. If, you're, if you're abrasive to a person, I always have this uh, analogy. You throw sand at the clan, the clan will close their mouth. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. you want them to be relaxed. Um, so that's what I, I try to do mm -hmm. uh, prior to the interview. Okay, so uh, talking about that, like if you apply this in the public context where mm -hmm. people go for networking, they meet new people. Mm -hmm. um, how do they get people to open up and really talk to them and have a nice conversation? Okay, so these are all the books that I've read as well. Ah, if you nice. knew, if you know uh, Dale Carnegie, mm -hmm. uh, he wrote this book, How to Win Friends to Influence People. Mm -hmm. Always be interested, not interesting. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. Okay. Right? It's not about you, it's not about how wonderful I am, it's not about that. Being genuinely interested about a person, you know, like, when did you graduate, right? Mm -hmm. So, are you doing this full time? I'm genuinely interested. Right. I'm, you know, you have to be genuinely interested and not for small talk. Mm -hmm. um, so, I find that that's uh, very important, mm -hmm. right, in, in, in a networking session. Right in okay. a networking session when you're meeting someone, and I try not to talk about work too much. You know, I let, mm. I, I just try to get to know a person as a person. Right. right? And then of course, like you look, they go, oh, so you're in this industry. What's the industry like now? How do you feel? What's what's happening in the marketplace? Because I am genuinely interested. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not trying to make small talk. Okay. Right. Right. So, right. So. Okay. So um, also, I think that you have spoken with at. A lot of big stages. Mm. Um, how do you transform yourself into a powerful communicator? <laughs> uh, how do I trust? I'm just, I, for mm. me, there's some skills that you learn, right? When you're yeah. on radio, it's very conversational. Yeah. It's very mm. conversational. You're assuming that you're talking to a friend and someone is listening, and someone yeah. in the coffee table sitting next to you. On the stage, there is the, what we call a stage presence, right? And mm. you have to own the stage, right? right? You have to be able to occupy that space and have that confidence. Yeah. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, you can be a great showy talker. You must come with depth. You must come with content. You mm. must come with something yeah. to give to someone. One, right okay. and then you these are th that's the heart of what you're trying to do right then the tactics is okay what is my key message what are the three underlying key messages that I have to tell because anything too much information people cannot register anyway yeah. right so just be very clear so this is the tactical this is the message the main message I want to give three supporting points to get that message across right so the tactics but generally mm. go there with uh, with wanting to give mm-hmm yeah. 
Okay, so assuming that you have the content and you have like the main content and three supporting evidence mm. for that, um, what's next? What is the criteria for you being able to deliver that message powerfully across to everyone in the room? I always find that uh, when you tell me, is there a technique, is there a style, you watch other people, right? You watch, mm. uh, I watch how other people present as well. Do I then use props? Do I then use videos? Do I then use these things to get that message across? Mm. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, it's about being authentic. Okay. Right, being authentic, nobody expect you to be perfect. Nobody expect you to be, you know, superfluous. The hands right place. I don't get that right. You know, right. I don't get that right. But um, I think people also appreciate that you can laugh at yourself. Mm -hmm. And like I say, like, be authentic. And, and I can laugh at myself a lot, very easily. Like when you make a mistake. When you make a mistake, and you don't, mm -hmm. you don't make a big deal about it, right? I, I, to me, I don't make a big deal about it. I just want to. I have, I have a message that I want to tell, right? And mm -hmm. you know, be, be general. But of course, things like people say, Frida, you talk too fast. So it's like, <laughs> okay, these are the, the, these are the, the, the methods I have to be mindful of. Don't talk so fast. Mm -hmm. But naturally, I talk very quickly. Yeah. So then I have to be very conscious. Okay, don't talk so quickly. That sort of thing. So. Be, uh, be clear with your be authentic have your messaging have all that sort of thing but at the end of the day people appreciate you being real yeah mm, okay is that also what makes you so successful being real <laughs> i I, do, I hope so i okay, hope so okay. i i think that uh, when i look back at um I'm, and I'm very proud that i've got a lot of good friends and i've got mm -hmm. good friends from primary school in brunei i've got good friends from school when i was in kuching i've got uni friends uh when i was studying here when i was studying mm -hmm. in australia and these and working you know throughout my career and i yeah. still have really good friends in that area right. so i think that is important um uh, to me that is important not mm. losing not losing uh who you are and these people keep you humble they keep you real Mm, yeah. Okay, because I really like the fact that you said that being authentic mm. because I think a lot of people they try to be uh, perfect on stage like they they want to say the right word at the right time and this makes a lot of people nervous sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. I understand, right? Mm. I mean, so was I, right? Mm. I mean, I mean, I still get the nerves when I go right. on stage, right? I still get the nerves because you're thinking at the end of the day, okay, am I able to deliver my message? Always have the nerves, always be a little bit nervous, mm. and that's okay, right? Mm. But then after you just say, so God, help me, and, and just, <laughs> you know, just... Uh, put your words into my mouth and just you know let me let mm. me speak from my heart right mm. okay so like you have done a lot of talks that still when you go up on stage you feel nervous right yeah okay so let's say for first timer when they step out on okay. stage for the first time how do they overcome that fear who okay how mm. do you, well practice practice a lot right i mm. mean this is now so easy to practice whether you want to practice in front of a friend whether you want mm -hmm. to practice in front of your phone put the video on right now we have all these gadgets and you know it's so easily right. available mm. so just practice and all that and understand that you know it's never going to be perfect you always can be better the next time even mm -hmm. you know everybody i know would say they can always be better the next time right know your right. lines you know practice look uh look at how um ted you know, TED Talks, they have a way of doing things. Mm -hmm. How do they present? Right. You know, learn from that and know that next time I'll do better. Mm. Right. Maybe three questions you can ask yourself even, uh, you know, um, after you finished is like three things I could improve. Mm -hmm. Not three things I suck at, yeah. but three things I can improve. And that's again, that mindset question you ask yourself, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. So uh, how do you learn public speaking at the first place? Like when you uh, are a radio host, then when you get invited to speak. So how did you learn that skill? Uh, mm. um, you know what? When people mm -hmm. first, when I was first asked to speak, I was so nervous. Okay. I, I mean, I still get nervous. And, mm -hmm. But it was something that intrigued me because I wanted to get over that fear. Right? I want to get over that fear. I want to be able to, to improve and, and master this skill. So it's like, mm -hmm. do it anyway. You feel the fear and do <laughs> it anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, there's got to be, you know, because uh, you, 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 to get out of your comfort zone, you try that little bit, that little bit, that little bit, right? right? So um, there is, a, there is a, a book that I read called uh, Playing Big, written mm -hmm. by this lady called Tara Moore. And the word fear in Hebrew has two meanings of fear like mm. when the english language fear is just fear yeah in the hebrew language there's two versions of fear one type of fear i won't pronounce it because it's in hebrew one type of fear is the real life fear like i'll fall off a cliff right. i get hit by a bus that kind of fear or, or you know those kind of uh, just to protect you right mm. the other fear is that 
it's about you getting out of your comfort zone. Okay. Okay. So understand that this fear, you won't die lah. Right? So when you won't die, let me try it anyway. Right? Public speaking is really scary, mm -hmm. but you won't die. Right. Right? So it's, it's, it's a false, what is that? False evidence appearing, appearing real. Appearing real. Right? Yeah. So you, you won't die. So you enlarge it and next time you get a little bit braver, a little bit braver, a little bit braver. Mm. Yeah. So one step at a time. One step mm. at a time. Okay, mm. so do you remember like every time before you step up on the stage, what is the thing that you said to yourself to really calm yourself down? Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, just be, I think I always say you do you, you know, you do you and then like, uh, I, I, I personally always say a prayer. I always mm -hmm. say a prayer that, you know, God, your words, not mine. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a very simple thing. Your okay. words, not mine. So that when I, I speak, I am, you are, you are empowering me to speak. You know, so mm. this is that little simple prayer that I have. Your words, not mine, and you know, just just do it. Right. <laughs> well, it sounds so simple coming from you. <laughs> it's it's how, right. it's how mm -hmm. it's been how I've been doing this forever. You know. Mm. So when people always look at it, and I said, look, everything takes time, consistency and persistency, right? Mm. And even you do there's a in persistency will always beat intensity when you do something like this right intensity but short period and you give up mm. it's not going to help you but if you're consistently doing it over the years i've been in i've been in this industry um you know i mean i've been work i've been in radio mm. for close to 30 years right right, right? so right. you know mm. how, like i said how old are you you're not you know so it's 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 time mm. you know right uh so you know you you just build up over the years mm, okay so uh, like throughout the years uh you have done public speaking you have interviewed people what was the biggest mistake that you ever made in th your career biggest mistake uh, mm. <sighs> okay so you're talking from uh, there's too many you see i'm asking yeah, from, many ra mistakes. <laughs> from radio is it from this you know uh, yeah let's put it in the context of public speaking in public speaking mm -hmm. uh nothing too embarrassing uh or you just sort of quickly like i think like for, i i really can't remember and that's mm -hmm. not because uh, i'm not saying that i've never done it yeah. but probably i just laugh at myself would make a mistake you know so i just laugh at myself and then mm -hmm. i think you know it makes the crowd laugh it makes me laugh probably i can't mm -hmm. i can't remember okay yeah mm -hmm. so when you say laugh at yourself which means that uh at on stage when you are talking about something that you made a mistake you laugh at yourself right away <laughs> yeah yeah it's very, <laughs> it's very easy <laughs> it's very easy to laugh at yourself uh, to me anyway okay yeah. okay okay so and also uh, people have this misconception that only extrovert can speak while introvert sometimes uh they may not be able to communicate their message clearly mm. so what is your point of view on that okay mm. that's a very good one so mm. it and it covers the gamut of communication right mm. uh we look at actually steve jobs was is an introvert right okay. okay uh bill gates is definitely an introvert right okay. and you don't but he is very good i don't know if you saw this video on youtube someone mm -hmm. shared it with me a while right. back where he talked about mosquitoes uh how people are dying from malaria right and he mm -hmm. gave an example he was in a room and then he opened his jar and says that you know mm -hmm. uh millions of in africa are dying mm -hmm. from malaria mm -hmm. he said it's not fair that all you privileged people don't have a chance to get this right and then mm -hmm. so it supposedly mosquitoes lah. and then he said actually no those are not mosquitoes or malaria but mm. so he gave that everybody was just in a state of shock because this mosquitoes just came out of the room right? right so you can use props you can okay. use you can use these things to get your story across right mm -hmm. um so there are many ways around it like, and he's in you your message still comes through right mm -hmm. so that's one way but also at the same time and that's the thing right when we think of speakers we always think of these people who are like um if i uh sir richard branson tan sri tony fernandez definite yeah. definite extroverts right mm -hmm. but we all don't have to be like that Right? Mm -hmm. We don't have, and again, you don't have to be like that. Um, to me, when you understand why you have to do it, sometimes, public speaking, mm -hmm. why you have to do it is mm -hmm. uh, get over yourself. What is the reason I need to get this message across? Mm -hmm. Right? When I go on air, um, it's not about how good I sound. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have to sound good, but that's not my overall objective. My right. overall objective whenever I go to work, whenever I interview someone is, will someone listen to this interview, podcast uh, on radio, and said, wow, I learned, one person said, I learned something from that interview. Mm. And if one person 
heard that and said it made a difference to your lives, I've done my job. Right. Right? Mm. So when I understand the bigger purpose of what I'm doing, mm -hmm. then everything else pales in comparison. Then I've taken the focus off me. I've taken, the, I've put the purpose into why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right, right. Okay, I think I can relate to that as well. Like previously when I was on stage, I was like really nervous. Mm -hmm. But then uh, back then I would ask myself one question and mm -hmm. that question would be, what is the one thing that I want everyone to take away from right. after that talk? So right. yeah, so when I shift that focus to the crowd, the fear actually goes off right. like, magically. So you, you take yeah. the, the focus mm -hmm. off you. Why are you doing what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have a message and I think the message will help someone, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and then the fear you know you, you're not thinking about yourself anymore right 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 and also um do you think that public speaking is something that is generic or something that is the talent or is it something that can be practiced it's definitely something that can be practiced it's okay. for sure right you know so mm. again we always like to think of personalities you mm. know are we introvert extrovert it's definitely something that can be practiced if you think it's important now um a lot of people are put in a situation right now where you do have to speak you do mm. have to you know uh, there, there are many other ways of communicating you can talk on linkedin you can write mm -hmm. articles there are many ways of communicating right? yeah mm. but i guess if you want to move ahead in leadership position if you want to mm. be the CEO of a company or to start your own business um, and you have to talk to media you have to talk to investors mm -hmm. these are the skills you have to learn right right mm. whether you're in a job situation and you want to move up the career ladder you have to learn presentation skills if you're in business and you start your business and you want series A series B funding you have to learn to present right so you you have to uh, there are many ways I say of communicating mm. but I think it is a very important skill. And are you saying that this skill everyone should acquire it? I believe everyone should learn it. If it's mm. something that frightens you, do it. You know, because it just gives it gives you the courage to do things in other areas. Right? If mm. you can encourage if you believe you feel that you've done this, it just gives you courage to do other things. So I'm, I'm giving an example mm. um, of just me finishing a full marathon, right? And that confidence from finishing a full marathon helped me in other areas of my life. Like Okay, I did it. I, I, you know, I built that confidence in this, right? It translates into other areas of your life. Right. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. So uh, for people who would like to venture into like the speaking industry, uh, being a radio host, being a public speaker or an MC, what is your advice for them? It takes work. It doesn't happen overnight, darlings. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, everybody thinks it's about that and you, you know, it's not, mm. uh, if you talk about being an MC, you mm. are not the star of the show. Right. Even as a radio host, you are not the star of the show. Okay. Your interviewee is the star of the show. When you're emceeing an event, the event is the star of the show. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. it's about that. Right? Um, and it's no, not about immediate gratification. It is about delayed gratification. Uh, people like to know that you're reliable. People know that you turn up on time. So these principles don't change. Mm -hmm. People need to know that you follow up on your work. When you become an MC, you prepare the script. I prepare my script as soon as I, I, I get you know the, the information right. and i start going through with the client so this is what you don't see behind the scenes right right and i don't leave things to the last minute mm -hmm. right so this is what people still respect you for being professional in whatever you right. do and this one is you know uh it, it's not how do i mm. how do i teach you that right. how do i teach you being meticulous how do i teach you doing things on time these are the values that people look at because one minute, yeah, great, right? Then after that, this person has a reputation for being late. This person has a reputation for not doing her work mm. so much for anything you do in life. Yeah. So that's the most important criteria. Yeah. Not. Okay. Yeah. And talking about like behind the scene where you prepare your script, mm. um, like just now you mentioned that in communication, the most important thing is your message. You need to mm. convey your message clearly. So at the same time, should someone, uh, when they deliver this message, should someone deliver it spontaneously or should they have a script? What is your view on that? Uh, in speaking? Yeah. Um, mm. I think you, um, if you're giving a speech, I guess if you're behind a rostrum, I still find that the best thing is talking. Mm. Uh, you have your little bullets. 
you right. know like you look at a bullet and then you can expand the story because uh, you would know the story best right if you mm-hmm. need little prompters you know, like, what do i say then you look at the bullet oh i gotta talk about this then you you, you get into talking about it so i find that when it's fully scripted it's probably not so good but maybe when mm-hmm. you're starting out why not you know what i mean it's okay once you get that confidence mm-hmm. once you get the everything like i mean even when i do an mc script i still script everything like I don't every do, single sentence isn't it? i'll script everything i won't read everything right right i won't mm-hmm. read everything but i the The client needs to know that I'll be saying these things, and mm. and you know they know that I might turn it, you know, like twist it a bit, make it more natural, whatever. But they also need to know that this is what's going to be said, right? Mm. So so it's like that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you talk about like being an MC, being a host is not about yourself; it's about mm. your client. Mm. So what about like being a keynote speaker? Is about your message, right? Mm. It's about the message. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you get that message delivered across effectively? How do I get that mesh? Same same principles. What is that? Yeah. The, what's my main mm. story, right? And then right. supporting it with three, three supporting points of how do I got mm. to that? You know, what I mean, and the very simplistic level that would be it. Uh, like mm. one of the things that I talk about is really about consistency of doing things, right? Of if you want to stand out in a crowd, right? Over the years, what would be your USP? What would be your brand? What will people know you for? Mm. Um, maybe spend some time developing that. Even if you don't know what it is, try out different things, mm. you know, just to see. Uh, what could be of interest to you? Right. Talking about like USP brand, how do people find that? And what like what is your USP? Oh, mm. uh, my USP. I would say that it's very much uh, business related, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm in that space and something that I'm generally interested in. Uh, I've gotten roped into a lot of things about women empowerment, which I do feel very important about. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of mindset change that needs to be done with women themselves when right. it comes to women empowerment. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that I'm personally interested in social enterprises. So So you and these are things I've discovered along the way, right? And mm-hmm. this is something I've discovered along the last ten years. Right. Uh, that you know, oh yeah, and your passions. Uh, you don't discover your passion. Sometimes you develop your passion. You mm. you learn new things. Now my latest thing is, um, I want to take up design thinking, right? And just mm-hmm. because it interests me, I don't know what it'll lead mm. to, but I love. Learning more about it, I love. Right. Mm. Uh, it's upskilling, reskilling, but then also this seems to be the way forward when we talk about the future and with AI mm. and Industry right. 4.0 and all mm. that. What's going to make an individual stand apart? The ability to think is still a human ability. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so how do someone like find their USP or find their passion? What do they like to do in life? Is it by exploring different yes, things? Yes, yes. Just Ex- explore, explore. explore right. You're right. Yeah. I mean, every year I set new goals. Uh, mm. So, like, what is my mental goal? Mm. So, my mental goal this well this year, last year, this year, and I think I'm going to next year was it was design thinking, right? What is a new thing that I want to learn, right? Mm. Uh, over the years, I've tried jewelry making. I've tried, uh, you know. Pole dancing, you know, but just something fun, right? And mm-hmm. something different that I would not normally do, uh, not not because it's a career thing or whatever, but just just do something new every year, you know, and and see what's out there. And you meet all kinds of people. Right, right, right. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So I got just one more question for you. Right. Yeah. So I think uh, you mentioned your latest book, which is uh, Bursting Fixed Mindset. No, in your skin. In your skin, is yes. that that's the latest? Yes, that's the latest. Ah, okay. So can we share? Uh, can you share with our audience like what is that all about? Okay, mm. that okay. Uh, you can talk about the other book as well. But in your skin uh, is a compilation of stories of people that I admire, and they actually happen to be women. Okay. Um, about us being comfortable in our skin, right? Mm. We're all called to do different things, right. and some people are meant to, you know, sports is their thing, mm-hmm. right? Or some people, community work is their thing, right? And not to be determined by external expectations of success, okay? Right? And so it was like even uh, that discovery for me as well, right? About how to get comfortable in my skin, and so I featured different people in that book, and I just wanted, to, I guess, it's for both men and women. But I think like it resonates a lot more with women to just mm-hmm. be comfortable where you are, you know. And right. we're all called to do different things. And when you're called to do different things, you will excel in the things that you're called to do. Yeah. Right. Mm. And don't be worried about what people mm. say and think. Mm. That's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and how do people get that book? Oh, mm-hmm. they can go to MPH or they right. can go online. You know, uh, go check out my website. I think from my website you can also mm-hmm. buy it, like, which will link you to MPH. Right, right. So, but yeah, get get hold of the book. <laughs> well, uh, Freda, thank you so much, thank and you. I believe uh, we have learned so much from you. And for me personally, 
what I've learned, the biggest takeaway is really to be authentic in the message that you got to share. And in every communication, have one topic and three supporting details. Make it as simple as possible for people to really understand that. So uh, for you guys who wants to purchase uh, Freda's book, we'll include the link somewhere below. So <laughs> later you can click on that and support Freda if you would like. With that, thank you so much and hope to see you soon. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to get first-hand video on how you can build ultimate confidence and get cutting-edge strategies to help you achieve your next breakthrough in life. Thank you so much.